So the, the aim of this uh, uh, session is to uh, try to promote and to have a, in a practical uh, setting how the uh, ESMO ESTRO um, ESO guidelines on um, uh, anal cancer uh, uh, can be can be done. So I'm going to start just presenting a clinic very briefly. A clinical case uh, is a, a 63 years old uh, male with a, a long story of dyslipemia, hypertension, and a transient ischemic attack treated with uh, uh, carotid stenting 15 years ago, uh, with no other comorbidities, but still a heavy smoker that could be a problem in this disease. He presented with anal pain, and a digital rectal examination showed a perianal abscess and a fistula and uh, no palpable inguinal lymph nodes were uh, noted. The examination under anesthesia showed that starting two centimeters from the anal margin, there was a four centimeter uh, excrescent mass and a biopsy uh, was taken and also at the same time the abscess was uh, drained. The biopsy proved uh, to be a squamous cell um, a carcinoma. Uh, this patient was uh, positive for HPV 6 and 53 uh, subtypes. HIV test was negative. The MRI showed a trans uh, fistula of 3.6 centimeters, uh, no involvement of external sphincter, and no enlarged uh, inguinal lymph nodes were detect detected. And in the CT scan, the abdomen and the thorax, no metastatic disease was uh, observed. So in summary, this patient is presented with squamous cell carcinoma of the uh, anal canal um, with uh, stage uh, T2 CN0 M0, so it's stage two. So this patient was uh, planned to be treated with uh, uh, chemo radiation as definitive and potentially curative treatment. Uh, chemotherapy was uh, done with uh, 5-FU infusion, one gram uh, square meter per day, uh, day one to four, um, and also day 29 to 32, plus a mitomycin C, a single dose of 10 milligrams per square meter on day one. And um, uh, also radiotherapy uh, was given uh, uh, 100, 180 uh, centigrade per day uh, to the pelvic and the inguinal field, uh, 36 gray, and the pelvis without inguinal field, uh, uh, 45 uh, gray, and a tumor boost was added till 52 gray. The treatment was administered between February 16th and March 30, with no interruptions, which is also another important point when treating this disease. So toxicities were uh, uh, observed, grade three uh, perineal radiodermatitis, uh, grade one cystitis, and grade two oral mucositis. Uh, the first evaluation was done after eight weeks. Uh, uh, since the end of uh, uh, treatment, uh, the digital rectal examination showed no evidence of uh, tumor and no evidence of uh, uh, fistula. And uh, well, uh, to comment the management of this particular patient, uh, I would like Rob to, which is the, the main author of the ESMO ESTRO ESO guideline, to give his perspective on this uh, guideline. Uh, I'm going to pick up a few, a few issues here, which are mainly uh, the kind of issues that I get uh, emailed about uh, regarding anal cancer. Uh, and um, so, as, as, as has been stated, um, this patient had unusual HPV because mainly the types are 16, 18. Um, it's certainly not standard to measure HPV, but I think uh, it's uh, increasingly important. Um, and again, immunosuppression, uh, I think even, even without risk factors, I think most people are, um, are measuring uh, and, and, and counseling patients for, for their H, uh, HIV status. Smoking is really important. It, it impacts uh, both on the toxicity and on the outcomes and the late effects uh, uh, of uh, 
of the chemo radiation and it's really, really important to make sure that patients are counseled to give up smoking and to continue to stay off smoking. Uh, there are other autoimmune disorders and inflammatory bowel diseases which uh, may also be implicated. Standard workup which includes proctoscopy. Examination under anesthetic is often necessary, particularly in someone like this, which, where the uh, examination will likely to be extremely painful because of the, because of the fistula, uh, and to get a decent biopsy. Um, when we go back and look at uh, previous, um, previous patients, the biopsies are often very small, and if we're going to get uh, tissue in the future for translational work, I think you do need a reasonable size biopsy. I think pelvic MRI, uh, as shown here, gives you the best anatomical definition, allows you to stage the patient best, and gives you the best uh, way of being able to treat this patient rationally. I think transrectal ultrasound is feasible, but I think it's very difficult if patients are in a lot of pain, and it doesn't give you the same anatomical definition. Whole body CT to determine metastatic disease, and I think there is a role, particularly for the more advanced lesions, for, for positron emission tomography, sometimes you pick up pyreotic nodes and other sites of disease. I don't know if you have any. So again, MRIs, I think uh, diffusion-weighted MRI is also uh, quite a useful um, kind of thing, particularly from the radiation oncology point of view. These nodes, unlike in rectal cancer, I think they're much more accurate, and these nodes can, can help you in target delineation. PET scans, again, can be, uh, can be very useful, um, and they can show you nodes that you haven't really predicted, uh, and they can show you disease outside. Uh, standard TNM staging, we've, we've really been into. I think questions I get asked is, what is the role of surgery? Well, I think radical surgery, if there are reasons that are, radiotherapy is contraindicated, or, as sometimes is the case, it's already been administered, either for gyne gynecological or prostate cancer or bladder cancer, uh, there is an issue about a defunctioning stoma. I think we try and reduce those as much as possible, but in some patients the, the symptoms are quite, uh, quite marked. But uh, be aware that defunctioning stomas tend not to get reversed. So you have to think very carefully whether it's going to be cited. It is possible for younger patients to transpose the ovaries. Um, I think salvage APR should be done very much in specialized units. It's not the same operation as an APR in rectal, a standard APR in rectal cancer. The other question I get asked is about local excision. I think that is feasible for very small lesions, usually two centimeters diameter, usually at the anal margin. But it's to be avoided uh, for poorly differentiated lesions. Um, I, I think very, it's very rare for us to see lymphovascular invasion, but occasionally that's, that's the case. I think you can only do it if, you've got, if the surgeon's got high confidence that adequate margins are going to be achieved. Um, and then I think sometimes the deep margin, even if the surgeon says, I, I can go back and resect, you don't really know where the tumor was to get that deep margin. Uh, so I, I think uh, you have to be really quite sure. And one thing always to avoid is piecemeal resections. Sometimes we, we have this in the MDT, you have 15 bits of tissue and the, uh, and the pathologist has a terrible job trying to juggle these things and tell you about size of tumor and margins. Every effort to, should be avoid, made to avoid smoking before therapy. It worsens toxicity and late toxicity and eventual outcomes. Gynecological assessment should be routine in younger females. Uh, there is a, often field change, and these patients often have vulval and cervical lesions. So I think you always should uh, get your gynecology colleagues to assess these patients. IMRT currently, I think, is, the, is, is becoming the standard of care. There are good, um, good atlases, uh, like uh, the Australian atlas, to help you in target delineation. Standard chemotherapy, as I said, is five of you mitomycin C. And I think that there are options for, for drugs like capcitabine. Uh, I doubt that ever that we will have a, a randomized trial here. It seems that the, uh, the, the toxicity and outcomes are equivalent. Um, how long is it safe to wait? I think data from the ACT2 trial suggests that it can actually wait and assess these patients up to about 26 weeks uh, after the, uh, the start of chemo radiation, and I think it's safe to do it at that stage. So in conclusion, along with the guidelines, Patients should be treated in specialist units. That's probably the most important recommendation from the guidelines. Imaging, CT, MRI, and PET, sometimes. 
advisory smoking, limited local excisions, chemo radiation 5 of you mitomycin, better toxicity and compliance if you use IMRT. We still don't know the optimum dose here. We haven't done trials to extrapolate that. Assess your complete clinical response up to six months and, there's, and a degree of surveillance, although the optimum methods of surveillance are not yet uh, defined. Thank you.